With all the possible linear motion solutions, how does someone decide which solutions are comparable, and then how do they decide which one is best? Through some basic analytical comparison, we can decide which one to use. We will first use engineering equivalents to determine which solutions will perform similarly, and then we will use commercial equivalents to determine which is most cost effective. For the purposes of this video, we are going to compare the Imperial inch sizes of IGUS Drylin R bearing with iGlide J liner to the PVC Linear Simplicity bearing with the Freelon Gold liner. The size range for comparison is limited to those sizes where all comparisons can be made throughout the video. First, let's compare static load of the IGUS Drylin R bearing to the PVC Simplicity bearing by using values directly from the catalogs. The table shows that the static load values for PBC's products are larger than the equivalently sized IGUS bearing. Now let's compare the values to see exactly how much larger they are. By switching from IGUS to PBC, there is an approximate average of 25% increase in static load capacity. Now let's move on to the comparison of dynamic loads. For a plane bearing, dynamic load is calculated based upon PV value. PV stands for pressure times velocity. The standard imperial units for PV are PSI times feet per minute. Pressure is load divided by effective surface area. For a given application, the load and velocity remain constant and does not vary based on the type of bearing used. However, the effective surface area does change based on the type of bearing used. Let's now look at the standard Drylin R bearings and the standard Simplicity bearing. Let's compare the three primary dimensions of the bearings, ID, OD, and length. Nominally, all three have the same value and are size interchangeable with standard ball bearings. However, the Drylin bearing does not have a complete surface area in contact with the shaft. Each gap is a reduction in effective surface area. Each reduction in surface area is also a reduction in the dynamic performance capacity of the bearing. Let's quantify exactly how much of a difference there is between the two types of bearings. In order to do this, we have to understand how to calculate effective surface area. Effective surface area is the area of the shaft that can actually carry load. This is normally done by creating a 2D plane that is normal to the applied radial force and bisects the bearing through its center. The actual surface area is then projected onto this plane. We will use SOLIDWORKS to project and measure the area. Let's follow the process and fill in a table so that we can compare the effective surface area of Simplicity and Dryland bearings. The table shows that the effective surface area for PBC's products is larger than the equivalently sized IGUS bearing. Now let's compare the values to see exactly how much larger they are. By switching from IGUS to PVC, there is an approximate average of 50% increase in effective surface area. The third part of the PV formula is the maximum dynamic capacity of the bearings. This is referred to as maximum PV value. This value is not calculated. It is given in the manufacturer's catalog and is specific to the bearing material. First, we will look up the iGlide J maximum PV value inside the IGUS catalog. This catalog page shows the iGlide J bearing material has a maximum PV of 9,700 PSI times feet per minute. Now let's look for the Freelon Gold maximum PV value inside the PVC Linear catalog. This catalog page shows the maximum PV value for the Freelon Gold material to be 20,000 PSI times feet per minute. By switching from an iGlide J bearing to a Freelon Gold bearing, there is an approximate 100% increase in maximum PV value. We've now seen that there is a 50% increase in effective surface area and a 100% increase in maximum PV, but what does that mean for an actual application? Let's go ahead and figure out exactly what this means. Let's start by creating another table so that we can compare using the exact same parts we compared earlier. 
Let's actually go back to the surface area table we saw earlier. Since the PV value we are using is in imperial units, let's convert the effective surface area from square millimeters to square inches. Let's add a column for the maximum PV and input the values we found earlier. Let's add two boxes to use as our input criteria for velocity and load. Let's randomly choose two values for now. We'll use 197 feet per minute and 22 and a half pounds. Let's calculate the applied PV. First, we take the applied load and divide it by the effective surface area to get the application's pressure in PSI. Then we multiply that by the velocity to get the applied PV. Comparing the applied PV to the maximum PV, we can calculate a factor of safety for this application. Let's add some color to the table to more easily see the resultant factor of safety. As a general rule of thumb, engineers typically choose a factor of safety of at least three for bearing applications. So let's say that anything over three will be green. Let's also say that two is our minimum value, so anything below two will be red. Everything in between will be yellow. For this first example, the simplicity bearings have a factor of safety that is approximately three times as great as the equivalent IGUS bearing. That's a 200% increase. Let's change the applied load and velocity to see how the safety factor changes. No matter what the applied load and velocity are, the results remain constant with an approximate increase in the factor of safety by 200%. This means that you can save money by using a smaller bearing. This video is part one of a three-part series comparing PVC linear simplicity bearings against IGUS dryline R bearings. Be sure to watch part two and discover which bearing provides longer comparable life in a typical application.